From spinning mammals to walking yarn, PlayStation has had some interesting mascots over the years. And while PlayStation hasn't technically confirmed a new mascot, it's clear there's a new robot on the block. Uh, this one. Astrobot. Time and time again, this little guy has popped up in the tech demos for PlayStation hardware, even making an appearance on the box for the PlayStation Portal. I believe PlayStation wants to make this franchise massive. So in this video, I'm playing all five Astrobot games. Yes, that's right, there's five of them. And I'll be expressing my opinions on them. Our first Astrobot game is none other than The Playroom. This was released to show off the features of the brand new PlayStation 4, DualShock 4, and the PlayStation camera. Yep, his first appearance is none other than a tech demo. Oh, and at this point, he didn't actually even have a name. He was just called Bot. There are several mini games in this app to display some of the capabilities of the PS4, but it's the AR bot game where you're shown what's inside of the DualShock 4 that features Astrobot. You can shake the remote or cover the light to interact with the bots. You can also swipe with them to interact with them in your room, showing off some epic AR capabilities. And that's pretty much it. There's also a mini game called Ninja Bots, similar to Subway Surfer, where you throw ninja stars at enemies in front of you and collect coins. You can even play this in four player multiplayer. There were some other small mini games, but that was the bulk of Astrobot's first appearance. At the time, players didn't really see this as much more than just a tech demo. But the little robot wouldn't go unnoticed. Because in 2017, with the launch of the PSVR, PlayStation decided to bring him back in a brand new way with the release of the Playroom VR, which is a party game that shows off the capabilities of the PSVR 1 and other PlayStation controllers. Yes, another tech demo. I bought an entire PSVR 1 just for this video. Please become a member. There are so many cords and cables. I'm glad they simplified this for the PSVR 2. The PSVR is a multiplayer party game. Right away, I'm already feeling the tech demo-ness of this because, well, that's what it is. It uses the gyro and the middle pad from the DualShock and lets you use the controller as a gun and all these other things. This was technically the first full game entirely based on Astrobot species. Do robots have species? I I, I don't know. But once again, they found a really cool way to show off the tech. And heck, they even added a claw machine and collectibles in this free game too. Once again, PlayStation went above and beyond for a mere tech demo, fully utilizing the array of capabilities for the system that nobody bought. It's probably a good time to remember that this robot was still nameless. Even though the whole game centered around him and his buddies, they were still just called robots or VR bots. So while Sony obviously saw promise in the character, they just had not invested that far into him yet. But finally, after fan demand, Team Asobi decided to create create a full-fledged Astrobot game, showing off the capabilities of the PSVR in a 3D platformer. Astrobot Rescue Mission was released in October 2018, and this was the first time I played through it, because like I said, I never actually owned one of these VR headsets back in their heyday. And when I finally got around to booting it up, I was pleasantly surprised. The opening was so intense, and it's actually kind of sad seeing Astrobot's family and friends being destroyed, and watching him look into space depressed. Jumping into the first level, you can already see how vast each level is, encouraging you to look all over the place to find hidden details or paths. Finding Astrobot's friends who are scattered throughout the levels was challenging but rewarding. I missed a few, but exploring the world to find new ways to get them was fun and satisfying. The scale of the game with the tiny Astrobot exploring huge levels is impressive. The audio was amazing with a catchy and upbeat soundtrack, and the graphics, the game's design and visuals made me say holy smokes out loud multiple times. The water looks amazing. The lighting is fantastic. I was genuinely surprised that this was on PS4. And I can't forget to mention the collectibles. Some are hidden so well that you have to physically move around to spot them. It's just a really unique way to make a VR game. And it wasn't overshadowed by any one VR gimmick. It wasn't just fun for a VR game, it was a fun platformer overall. Before jumping into the game, I didn't understand how a VR platformer could be any different than just a standard platformer. But it's clear that they designed the levels to make you move around and look in different directions. The PS4 hardware was just used in such unique ways. With the touchpad, you can shoot ninja stars and slingshot astro, and the gyro controls can be used to spray a water gun, all while the rumble adds the extra level of haptic feedback to everything you do. It was such a cool experience. They even used the speakers on the controller to let you hear the bots as they get sucked into your dual shot. There are segments in the game where I, as the player, have to interact with the stage, like hitting my controller against a platform or smashing my head into things to find a new entryway or shake an octopus off my head. And that's why this game has to be in VR, which sucks because we've seen other VR games like FNAF Help Wanted get ported to non-VR versions that can be played with just a controller. That makes it stuck on this headset, unfortunately. It's kind of sad that most people won't get to experience this game. While I don't think it would be impossible to port it, it would take a lot of work. And with the history of PlayStation VR, I see why this was a one-time thing. I did experience a few issues, but none of them were the game's fault. Every problem I had was related to the PSVR itself, like the controller not moving because I was out of range, or the resolution dropping when the headset wasn't on in the right spot. There are just PSVR quirks that I wasn't really used to dealing with. But needless to say, I enjoyed every moment of this game. The massive boss fights, the collectibles, the level design, the graphics, by far one of my favorite VR experiences ever. And if you have a PSVR, 
it's absolutely worth checking out. Oh, I should also mention that this game scored 90 on Metacritic, won several awards, and is in the top 10 best reviewed VR games to date. After the success of that game, Team Asobi was tasked to making a new Astrobot game, this time utilizing the new hardware on the PS5 DualSense controller in a brand new game titled Astro's Playroom and serving as the tech demo for that system. Everyone who owns a PS5 has probably tried this out at least once, and if you haven't, you should because it's free. At its core, Astro's Playroom is a 3D platformer and it has very similar, if not identical physics to Rescue Mission, which I absolutely love. They're tight, they're good, don't fix what's not broken. Each world is themed around different aspects of the PS5 hardware, kind of breaking the fourth wall. But again, it's incredibly charming. You get taken into specific components of the console with levels like GPU Jungle and SSD Speedway. On top of that, there's a slew of nostalgic references to past PlayStation consoles and games, like freaking Crash Bandicoot. I love that guy. The game takes full advantage of the PS5's features, particularly the DualSense controller. You'll feel connected to every movement through haptic feedback, experience resistance in the triggers during actions, like feeling a spring when you're using the jumping frog thing, all the way down to Astro's feet with every step he takes. You'll also hear immersive audio directly from the controller. These features are tightly integrated into the gameplay in fun and imaginative ways. They even included weapons, and that's that's cool. The game is visually vibrant with a crisp 4K resolution, detailed environments, and smooth 60 frames per second. It's 16 steps ahead of the impressive graphics in Rescue Mission, with fantastic lighting, amazing physics on objects, and of course, the cool design of PlayStation features everywhere you go. The soundtrack is playful and upbeat and gets stuck in my head more than I want. While the game is relatively short, around three hours, it feels like the perfect length for its purpose. It's still packed with all the platformer basics, like collectibles to find, including artifacts from PlayStation's history, which gives players a reason to revisit levels. They've even kept the game up to date by adding new collectibles after the PS5's launch. DualSense Edge, my beloved, please become a member. Astro's Playroom is a delightful and extremely polished experience packed with character, nostalgia, and creative gameplay. Even though it's free, the game doesn't feel like a tech demo. It stands on its own as a joyful platformer and was a hoot to play outside of a VR headset. But I wanted more. Even when I first played this back when I got my PlayStation, I thought this could be amazing if they fleshed this out and made it an entire full-length game. And well, they did. Astrobot's Big Adventure. Oh wait, I'm so silly. This is just Astrobot inside a Sackboy the Big Adventure. As a skin, that's right. Astrobot was getting so popular, he even made his way into the Sackboy game, which is a four-player 3D platformer. Not gonna lie, I've been playing this with my wife recently, and I've only been using the Astrobot skin. Anyways, moving on. Let's talk about Astrobot, the newest self-title entry in the series. I've got a few takes on this game, and some of them are hot. Let's start with the good. Right away, once again, the graphics are stunning. Every texture is crisp, the water and other liquids are fun to interact with, the lighting and effects are insane, and of course, the grass, reflections, literally everything feels like a great looking AAA experience you'd primarily get from a PlayStation game. Throughout each level, you're tasked with collecting different things, such as puzzle pieces, which unlock features in the hub world like customizations for Astrobot and ship. Which by the way, I don't want to change because heck yeah. Oh yeah, his ship's a dual sense controller, which I have. Become a member, please. And there are bots around each level that represent a multitude of PlayStation icons, like Crash Bandicoot. And we love Crash Bandicoot. These bots are actually pretty well hidden. I'd say I needed to go back a second time in about 40% of the levels to finish collecting all the bots and puzzle pieces I missed the first time through. There are also secret levels you can only access within other levels, and they're extremely well hidden. I actually had to look up a few because uh, I'm not smart enough for some of them. The gameplay itself is incredibly fun. Each level introduced some sort of new gameplay mechanic that didn't feel like an overused gimmick. Every minute of gameplay felt fine-tuned and there wasn't really any fluff. Team Asobi got creative with the extensive amount of power-ups like the Bulldog where you blast through objects like glass and they integrate that perfectly into a boss fight. And while some gimmicks are similar to what we've seen in other 3D platformers like Mario Galaxy, this still feels fine-tuned and extremely well done. This is like Nintendo but on PlayStation. Another incredible part of this game are the PlayStation icons I mentioned. The levels that stand out are the ones where you play as those icons, like the God of War level or the Uncharted level. They are very well designed and take a lot from the source material, serving as a love letter for these PlayStation games. And let's not forget about how well the hardware is used. In classic Astrobot fashion, this game uses the hardware to its full capabilities, perfectly integrating the haptic feedback in the controllers and using the adaptive triggers so well. These features not only make the game more immersive, but are essential for progressing through the game. For example, some passageways have been unlocked by feeling the vibration on the controller and interacting with it. Although I do have to mention something that might just be personal. I think the biggest problem with this game for me is that it's just more Astrobot. Now don't get me wrong, the game is absolutely fantastic on its own and it's more than deserving of being one of the best, if not the best 3D platformer out there. But I couldn't help but feel like this was trending a little too close to previous installments. Obviously this could be because I played them all side by side in rapid succession, but they all felt a little too similar. Some things change slightly like the time it takes to charge up your spin attack or the height your laser feet can take you, but fundamentally it felt the same. 
And when you look at other top tier platformers, okay, they're all Mario, yes, but each one does something entirely different. So it doesn't feel exactly like the previous entry from movement to animations to even the environment around you. Speaking of the environment, this game looks incredible as we've discussed, but again, the overall design of enemies is definitely lacking. Most of the enemies aren't very memorable at all. You got some that jump or run after you, but they're pretty basic. Heck, I don't even know their names. The designs are okay, but like, you know this is a Goomba when you see it. And this, this is a random robot trying to cosplay as a Goomba or something. Definitely not as memorable or recognizable as it could be, but maybe that's just me. While we're on the topic of enemy design, let's talk about bosses. And I won't spoil the final boss fight, but I do want to talk about boss fights in general. A good chunk of these bosses have pretty basic designs. And while they look graphically fantastic, the gameplay overshadows them in comparison. The boss fights might not be super memorable, but boy are they fun. There are even some returning bosses, including the main boss, this green alien guy. Personally, I don't love the main boss, and it could have been so much cooler to see someone who actually looks like a villain and not so generic. But that's it. Everything else about the game is absolutely fantastic. Overall, Astro Bot's shaping up to be one of PlayStation's greatest mascots yet, especially in an era where most game mascots have already been long established at this point. I can only hope that they take the fantastic feedback they've gotten from this game and expand and improve on them even more, like an Astro Bot party game or another PlayStation fighting game. That'd be sweet. But this is one big step in the right direction. Let me know, have you played Astro Bot yet? Please consider liking and subscribing if you like this video. And if you want to support me, become a channel member. If you want to see the rise and fall of Mario and Sonic games, click this video. I have seen the next one. See you later.